to watch this because you are susceptible and you will be under attack. I don't want to sin in my dreams anymore. And God is showing me how. It's like a, having a spirit husband or a spirit wife in your dream, like having sex with you physically and you feel touched, molested, and you wake up feeling dirty, but you don't know how to pray you know, about Of course, it. I looked up and I saw this entity in the form of a man on top of me having sex with me. Out! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ! Hello viewers, uh, my name is Pastor Emmanuel. Here I am again to, 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 to just to expose the plan of the enemy, to expose what the devil is doing in our lives. No, no, to put him to shame, the Bible says we should not be ignorant. No, we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. So that is what this program is all about. The cauldron of the wickedness of the enemy. So today we're going to be talking about uh, you know, sex in your dreams. Most people may think it's something that is good because it appeals to the flesh. But after seeing the videos, the clips I'm going to put in this program, you have to think twice before you start thinking about enjoying it. Because sexual dream is one of the most tragic attacks against the children of God. You know, the Bible says that um, we should not defile the temple of God, you know. We should not defile the temple of God in our body because dream about sex indicates spiritual pollution. So if you are with me, I'm just going to pray. But, oh Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray for your divine intervention. I pray for your angels uh, to, to guard, you know, just ordain my word. The word that is coming out of my mouth. Ordain it, sanctify it, oh Lord God, and send it from home to home. And for those who are going through this kind of attack, Lord, begin to deliver them. Begin to set them free. And then let them have an open mind and hear what the Lord has to say. And you will be blessed at the end of this program. You will be delivered at the end of this program. You will be set free at the end of this program. And the angels of the Lord will come down in your house and make sure that they stamp out all forms of wickedness and evil and demonic influences in your house in the name of Jesus. Well, the first clip I'm going to show you, it's, um, it's a single mom. Her name is Heida. Is it? Heidi. Heida. Well, she will correct me as time goes on. So let's just, just watch and see what she has for us. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I am going to be discussing uh, something today that is kind of a, a sensitive topic. It's a little even embarrassing to talk about. Um, but I do sense a strong urgency to talk about it with you guys um, because I don't think that it's something that's shared very often. It's probably something that maybe even as Christians we feel even maybe ashamed of and just don't want to discuss it. But I think we need to understand the source of what is going on here. And once we understand the source, we are able to properly fight it off. The whole point of, of this, I think, is to bring shame onto us when we have no reason to be shameful. That shame has been lifted from us. So I'm fighting back this morning. Um, I even went back and forth for a little bit thinking maybe I shouldn't even discuss this because I don't know who all is watching my my videos. Um, I'm really a nobody. I'm, I'm a daughter of Christ. Anyone who loves Jesus Christ, anyone who professes him as Lord of Lords, as King of Kings, 
you need to watch this because you are susceptible and you will be under attack and um these dreams that were happening to me at night you guys they were horrific they were horrific i would wake up and i would feel so dirty and so grossed out and just perverted and disgusting and filthy and shameful and feeling like have I've sinned in my dreams. How can that happen? I am living so righteously or trying to live so righteously during the day and at night I am I'm being defiled and just feeling so grossed out and the Holy Spirit just telling me this is not your doing, Heidi. This is not your doing. These are attacks. These are full-blown attacks. I want to tell you guys, these, these entities that were, that were coming to me in my dreams, they were manifesting as people that I love. People in my life family members that I could never even conceive of doing the things that I was doing in my dreams with this was happening and I just I would wake up feeling so so disgusted so grossed out and that's the thing with these with these demons you guys because they are disgusting they're called unclean spirits for a reason they're filthy they're gross and just nasty on every level <laughs> um but oh man i i just started to feel like what is going on what is going on what is happening why is it that i i am just wanting to live purely for the lord so badly and at night night after night after night i am i am being tormented i am being pestered and and just messed with and i knew that this was not a subconscious thing that was in my mind from years past it's crap these were full-on demonic attacks so what i did oh I was reading up about soul ties, reading up about, um, um, you know, I was molested from a very, very young age. Okay, I'm talking like four or five years old, repeatedly, over and over and over again, throughout my childhood, with different children, and then with an adult. And then what happened was, instead of me um, then uh, victimizing other people I was always the submissive one I was always the one that that was being submissive and um, I took that with me into my adulthood you guys and I got into prostitution I got into pornography because I met the wrong people and I then be victimized myself over and over and over and over again it became like an addiction to defile my spirit and my soul over and over again and i didn't ever know where this was coming from and now i am just trying to stress to you i am living purely i am living purely in the name of the lord jesus who has washed me with his blood so to have these dreams was a big deal for me. It was a big deal for me. <sighs> Heidi, single mom, she'll be back again, you know, as the program progresses. Well, she was trying to find out why it is happening and she had to pray and pray and fasted. And this thing kept happening and like for some reason the, the spirit of god took her to when she was a child when she was abused by even the very ones that loved her and uh, during that time the the devil has a way of using pain to attach himself to you 
So during that time, this is what happened. And for some of you right now who are going through sexual abuses because you are very young and, and, and you know and you can't tell anybody, please cry out. You have to cry out to God, cry out to anybody, anybody around. Don't keep quiet because the devil uses it as 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 uh, uh, you know as an anchor to anchor himself onto you. And as time goes on, it gets into your mind, and to get him out is another problem. Now, let's listen to a, a second girl who had something similar, but, you know, there are so many aspects, so many ways that the devil used to, 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 you know, to harm the children of God. It's an attack. Oh, yeah, it's a demonic attack. Because it appeals to the flesh does not mean it is good. Trust me. The devil comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Don't forget that. Now let's listen to the next person. A lot of people shy away from it. I'm not shy about it. I'm not shy to talk about it. That's why we are speaking on it today. And as you can tell, it says sexual encounters in dreams. We all know that dreams are ways God interprets things to us, the way God reveals things to us. And you know, dreams are great, dreams are nice, but there's certain kind of dreams that we want to stay away from or pray against because they're evil attacks from the enemy. Sexual encounters, um, for example. And you might ask, sexual encounters in what sense? What do you mean? Sexual encounters, in the way I would put it, is um, you're sleeping in your dreams and you just feel like someone just used you or someone just had sex with you or you were touched in some kind of way or something and um, from what I researched and what I've heard I was told that the sexual encounters occurs when the person um, has an opening in their life meaning they're they either watch porn or they lust after something or someone or they just have an attack from the enemy and we all know the enemy attacks those that are on fire for God you know pastors ministers choir members you know anyone that is actively working for him the devil tries to find a way to secrete them and just mess their life up and the sexual encounters in dream is you know is one of those examples so it's like a, having a spirit husband or a spirit wife in your dream, like having sex with you physically and you feel touched, molested, and you wake up feeling dirty, but you don't know how to pray about it. So today we're going to well, do that. Well, everybody has their own story. And she talked about um, spiritual spouses, you know, when a wife or husband uh, deprives the other. That's one mistake people do. You know, some women who always say, oh, I have a headache, I have a headache. And when it continues, the devil knows a way, has a way of producing a spiritual wife for your husband. And all of a sudden, you begin to notice that the husband is no more interested in you, and so on, because the devil has, you know, kind of um, filled that void that the wife on earth is supposed to fill. And it happens both ways. When the husband is always away and doesn't have time to, to spend time with the wife, the devil also gets this a spiritual husband to, to satisfy the wife. So when God said you should not deprive each, each and each, every, two of you their the, the sexual rights, God is in plain because the devil will play into it. And to, to, to once the devil gets in to get him out, it needs a lot of prayer, fasting, and deliverance. Oh yeah, it, it will need a lot to get them out of your system. Now the next guy that's going to speak just a guy let us listen from a guy's point of view this you know a man of god who who, who is radical for christ and then he 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 put it bluntly you know the, the way he, he he encountered this sexual something and then he that's a word he used about free will you know let's let's watch him and see what he has to say Something just happened to me that's never happened to me before, or if it has, it is very, very rare. I don't want to sin in my dreams anymore, and God is showing me how. Last night, 
how? I had a dream and it was getting sexual and it was to the point where I had to make a decision and I was able to make a decision in my dream. And usually when these kinds of dreams take place, I don't ever realize or exercise any self-control or will. There's just not an opportunity. It happens so powerful and so fast that I wake up, I'm like, how'd that happen? Oh, and I get mad and I, I start crying out to God and I confess it and I, I pray that God gives me control in my dreams. And last night, it, it happened. It, it was like, I was given an opportunity to choose. And I, I actually remember sometimes in my dreams, and now, now it just comes to me, where I may have been given the opportunity to choose, but something deep inside knew that it was a dream and that go ahead and do it anyway. I mean, this is twisted stuff going on here. <laughs> and and I, God's given me some insight into my, I pray for this too. I say, God, help me understand my own heart. But anyway, back to the dream, I was like, at one point, I was like, I was, how do you say, enjoying the flesh, enjoying, and I was like, going for it. So I'm in the dream and I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm, I don't want to get graphic or anything, but if, if you've had these kinds of dreams before, you know how they just suck you right in, and you get pulled and, and right in, and then it's over, and you're, you're like, there's no thinking, there's no time to react, there's no free will, there's nothing. Well, we had in... See, at times, most of us are in a dream, you don't even remember who you are. Whether you're a Christian or not, you don't even know who you are. The devil sees that opportunity of innocence, the opportunity of lack of free will, and uses it to molest you and by molesting you sexually defies the temple of God that's your body so I want you guys to pay very close attention because I, I did I did a lot of statistics and I found out that 80% of human beings whether you're a man or a woman they encounter this kind of sexual demonic influence you know, they are shy to, to, to say something about it there's nothing to be shy about because it's not your fault. And at times, some people just went through kind of abuse and then the, the devil begin to manifest those evils in your mind and in your, from your mind, in your dreams and begin to, to, to just manifest their wickedness. Now, and some of these things, you know, it, it causes divorce between husbands and wives when they, they, they are no more, there's no more interest, nobody has feelings for one another and they just decide to go their separate ways. And then some children, spiritual children, result from this. There are some women who are actually pregnant, pregnant by these spiritual uh, spouses. But you will not notice. But the children will keep on growing, and eventually the children will start coming to stop your, you from having your own natural children because they have gotten their spiritual children. So we don't want to take this in slightly. The devil is cruel. He comes to kill, to steal, to destroy. So I'm just revealing these things. God told me to reveal the wickedness of Satan. I have about 13 episodes of how wicked the devil can do, you know, how, he, he, how wicked he is against the children of God, against the world. His intentions are evil. His plans are evil. His traps are evil. Everything about the devil is evil. It's just full of venoms. So we're going to hear the next uh, woman who was a little graphic and I know, I know this thing is graphic but I, I don't just want to sugarcoat anything. I want to be transparent and they are all transparent and we respect that. So that everybody will come out of their closet and find a way of terminating this spiritual attack. Let's watch the next clip. And God bless you as you watch. I was a Christian just by name, you know, by tradition. But I was never really born again. Anyway, um, one night, or one morning actually, I went to sleep within this year um, after watching a secular movie. I was off work that day and, you know, watched this secular movie. I want to say the name of it. Um, and once I fell asleep, I felt myself 
it during sleep, you know, in the spirit realm, um, having sexual intercourse. Now, of course, no one was at home with me. I was at home by myself. I lived by myself. So this was clearly all happening in the spirit, spirit realm. Um, you know, of course, I looked up and I saw this mm -hmm. entity in the form of a man on top of me having sex with me. Uh, even to the point where I was able to climax. But in the dream, uh, one thing that actually, and I, this had to be the Lord, although I wasn't saved at the time. You know, I thank God for his mercy. Um, in the dream, I started talking to this spirit. You know, uh, of course, when it's spiritually, you know, we normally speak through your mind. Uh, of course, the spirit, you know, there wasn't really any interaction. But then something came upon me and said, call the name of Jesus. Now, when you're in this type of state, you know, um, in a spirit, spiritual, while you're asleep, your body is physically asleep. But spiritually, uh, this is going on, the sexual um, appetite or the sexual, sexual scene. Um, while you're in that state, naturally, you try to call out the name of Jesus through your mouth. And that's when they would... They oppress, these spirits will press hard on your mouth where you're not even able to call out on the name of Jesus. And that's what happened to me. However, I was able to think the name of Jesus in my mind, speak it in my mind. And I saw the actual spirit that was having intercourse with me flee. I mean, flee at the name of Jesus. And immediately, I saw my spirit. I was naked with chains around my hands and around my feet and the chains had been broken and I was standing near my Bible that was in my actual apartment and then I woke up from well, the dream see the Bible said that in the name of Jesus Christ that every name must bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is the Lord that what she said that when she was going to she was lucky that even in that dream she was she, she, she was able to re recollect and remember that she was actually a child of God. And in which she tried so hard to call the name of Jesus, this creature held upon her throat so that she, she wouldn't sound the, the voice. But thank God that God gave us mind to think. If you cannot say it, so she started thinking in the name of Jesus and this thing had to flee. The Bible says when you submit to God and resist the devil, the devil will definitely flee. So in her own case, she was, well, that wasn't the first time anyway. But she kept on seeking the face of God, seeking the face of God, praying and fasting. And then Jesus manifested in her dream. So let's, let's continue to watch. Now I think we're going to go even further into a church where a man of God called somebody out. And he's really talking about this sex in the dream. God bless you as you watch. There is a brother there, you are a pastor, and uh, you have a spiritual wife. And uh, this has been disturbing your ministry and your wife. Come, come on, come on. You are a pastor, but have a spiritual wife. You are there, please come on. Come. Men of God, I'm the pastor you prophesied that he's got a spiritual wife disturbing the ministry. I'm the one. And she, she, she comes in the dream. She comes sometimes sleep between me and my wife. Started coming from December last year. Man of God, please help me. And you sense it. Uh -huh. Man of God, she will come like a, a shadow between me and my wife. And you know, sometimes the voice will come, like came early last week, and said, I am the woman, the slender woman, that wants you to be attracted to slender way, ladies. And sometimes I do not have affection to my wife. Man of God, please help me. And it's affecting my ministry. This is my wife, man of God. Man of God, is true. He doesn't have affection for me, and he's even short-tempered. He even told me that he's even sometimes wants to go out and leave me in the house to go if he can get somebody. It's just that he's afraid of God. I can confirm the prophecy as true and correct because 
what happened last week Sunday when the man of God was busy addressing or conducting the mass prayer he then came out and said there is a pastor you are here in our midst you are having an, a spiritual wife and, and this spirit is affecting your ministry as as well as your wife immediately that dawned into my spirit that was specifically directed to me because one of the main reasons why I'm here today or I was I was at church last week or at Snack of Church of Nations was because of the attack of this spiritual wife and then I just said that was the time God visited me to address the issue of spiritual wife well that was a man of God he said the bishop a bishop I know all these are individual stories and I think we'll find out why all these things happen so that we be on God and don't let the devil take you by surprise always remember Jesus Christ said whosoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved anytime you see something out of the ordinary do not think oh it's fun what we call fun in the eyes of God is sin because you are defiling and the devil is you are letting the devil defile the temple of God your body is a temple of God you know what happens when, when some, some virus or, 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 or sickness gets into your body it begins to affect all parts of your body and you need something some medication to, 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 to kind of get healed and wipe out the virus out of your system the same thing happens to our spiritual being we need the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse us all the time. Let's see what the next clip says. I'm just going to breeze through these clips. So at the end, I think I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm going to pray for everyone that is watching. And please don't take it lightly. This is not just one of those channels where I, I preach. I just want to do it with multimedia. Because at times, most people, they, believe until, they don't believe until they see an experience. It is an attack. That's a woman you met in the dream. Yes, man of God. Even two days ago. Anytime you meet this woman, you will bleed profoundly in your heart. And when you go to the toilet, you see traces of blood. Fresh blood. You are right, man of God. Yes, yes. I confirm the God. The mom was complaining to this morning to Don't me. Don't worry. Once you are delivered and this woman stop this nonsense. It's true. He walked up to me and asked me, Why, Brian, can I speak to you? I said, Yes, sir. He said he can see a bleeding from my heart, which I confirmed to be true. He went further to tell me that it is an attack due to this woman I do meet in my dream. And I confirmed everything to be true the truth and nothing but the truth. It all started in 2007. When I was sleeping, I saw a strange bird, black, very big. The bird perched on my mouth and we had an exchange through the mouth. So when I woke up from the sleep, I became very, very tired, became very, very weak. I started expressing this heart pain. Since that time, it looked as if it stopped, but it will still continue. So, as you have seen that last week Sunday, the man of God walked up to me and I confirmed that to be true because each time I see this lady in my dream, I will begin to excrete blood when I go to the restroom to defecate. To the extent that a whole of tissue, I could finish it in one, just one sitting because this kind of blood, it will look as if I am now urinating through my anus. And when I look into the water closet or something, I will see every place of that, every part there, red. Oh my God, I became very, very weak, very, very tired because of this problem. I said, Mom, let's go to synagogue. I know God will visit us here. We came here, as you have seen, the man of God spoke to me, and right at that moment, he prayed for me. 
a strange being that reflected to the dream I had in 2007 left my body immediately. Well, well, the first time she kept this spiritual woman, this spirit of uh, perversion or spirit of uh, lust came to him. Uh, it came like a bird, like you heard him say, and they had the kind of exchange, fluid exchange, and since then he never became the same again. And uh, started bleeding. His heart actually started bleeding. Bleeding, you know, uh, hemorrhaging. So and he said, any time this woman comes and sleeps with him, something must go wrong. So he couldn't help it but to come for deliverance. And then you see some of these things that people do, it, 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 like the man at, at the time, see, he lost his, he became impotent. He wasn't able to sleep with his wife anymore. Anytime the wife comes around, he's not able to, 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 to get his erection up. But when the, the spirit to our wife comes, gets him up and about. So you see what they do, they come into your life, they mess you up, they, they, they separate you from your loved ones, they, they begin to destroy. That's what the devil comes to come to steal, to kill and to destroy. They will come and kill and kill and kill and destroy everything that God has put in place for you. If you let them come, they will destroy your family, they will destroy your marriage, they will destroy your career, they will destroy your business and so on. And today, you're going to terminate that, those forces, those wickedness, the, the, the demonic influence in your life because I'm going to call upon fire from heaven to come to your rescue in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's continue to watch. Prayer! I am the spiritual husband. Ah. What have you done to her? I have no affection for her husband. No affection for her husband. How long have you been living in her? Since her childhood. I married her a long time ago when she was a child. Her parents willingly gave her to me with a goat. With a goat? A goat, yes. What have you done to the marriage? There is no affection. To her marriage? Yes. As you see her, she can even stay two months or more than without even demanding for her husband. And I like it. Her attitude at home is that there is no affection. And I, I'm begging her, because of this, I will buy a, cost, a costly clothes for her in order to her to have affection to me. You say you cause her not to have affection for the husband? Yes. Why? She's my wife. Can she marry two husbands at a time? She can't. She's not supposed to have affection with the husband. Sir, what can you say about the affection? If any time I sleep with her, she will just face war. If I need her, I will start begging. At times she say I should pay money. She will I say should, what? I should bring money. That I don't know that that thing is too expensive. I should bring money. You will tell me, pay money now. It's too expensive. Somebody wife free of charge. You, you say what? You cannot have somebody's wife free of charge. You can't. You cannot. You pay price. You get what you want. Mm -hmm, that is it. So who is he to you now? I told that he married my wife. I am the one talking. Can't you see me? Can't you see me that I'm a big person? And their father is an idol worshiper. He worships me. Well, well. See, the woman was, because of her spiritual husband, she has no, for three months, she never let her natural husband torture. Because the spiritual husband is determined to make sure that they separate the marriage. And then this is for married couples. Some people just, the first day people get married, they are sweet, they go on a honeymoon, and by the time you know it, they are beginning to face divorce because they, somebody left the window open for the enemy to come and begin to, to sleep with the wife or begin to sleep with the husband and eventually they, they divorce. And I, I have to let you know, there are some of these things happen when people watch pornographic movies. They come into pornographic movies and begin to, to influence the wife or the husband and eventually separate the families apart. So let's keep watching. And as you're watching, God will prepare your heart for the prayer that is coming up so that you don't fall a victim to this. And for information, after watching this, at the bottom of the screen, make sure please you share it to as many people as possible. 
Because I am determined to get back at the enemy. He's been doing something in the dark and we need to bring it to light. So that all homes will begin to flush out this wickedness that is called the devil and spiritual wives and uh, spirit of perversion and, and spirit of, you know, no, no, just a spirit of, of lust. So let's continue to watch from a different perspective. What have you done to him? Spirit of lust. He As likes women. Spirit of, As spirit of lust, how do you operate in this body? <laughs> Any woman he sees, so he's supposed to. he wants to know about her. What have you done to his marital life? No affection. He likes his wife. No, no affection for no more than five years. No how has this spirit of lust affected the marriage? Fred! Sarah, come here, talk. How has the spirit of lust affected this man's marriage? No affection for the wife. He's always weak with the wife. Siempre está débil. What is it it's a security man. What have you done to his business, his job as a security No progress. No problem. State. The problem that brought me to Synagogue Church of all nations is problem of spiritual wife and spirit of lust. Before you go ahead, sir, just introduce the people beside you. Uh, the person beside me, this one is my wife, my sweet wife. This is the only, the only child I have. That is my wife, junior sister. You're all welcome here. So, sir, you said you that the problems that brought you here were brought you here was a spiritual wife and a spirit of lust. Can you just explain more about these problems and how they really affected your life? Spirit of lust. Yeah, for a very long time ago, even I bumped into it. So in my whole family, the same thing is affecting us. Nothing goes well. Make love in the dream. Eat in the dream. In fact, after marrying this woman, three days after the wedding, we can see our brother here is overcome by the joy of what the Lord has done in his life after reflecting back of how this evil spirit had tormented his life in marriage. These tears that we're seeing here are tears of joy and also tears of remorse as to how this evil spirit pushed our brother to do so many. Uh, terrible things in the past as a result of the spirit of lust, but we give glory to God that he is here today in our midst to share his testimony. So go ahead, sir. Uh, the cry I'm crying is not that I want to cry. I'm crying because of, I'm happy. I'm happy today. This woman, after three days of marriage, she caught me with her best friend. Well... See, in that case of the family, what did the spirit did to her is for, her, for him to lust after women. Any kind of woman, young, old, white, black, brown. And he's married. He couldn't control his lust for women. So this, you know, when you see people behaving like this, when you see these patterns, don't just say, that is how they were created. No, 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 no. The Bible said that, you know, that this body was wonderfully, fearfully, and beautifully made by God. I know the devil doesn't like anything that is holy or righteous or upright. So the spirit of lust got hold of this man and is gradually destroying and destroying their family, destroying his marriage. And don't forget... This dream about sex indicates spiritual pollution. Everything that God does is pure. But the devil is determined to, to pollute the temple of God. And don't forget that we are made in the image and likeness of God. So if you are a man or a woman that's going through this kind of thing, please pay attention. Because at the end, there are solutions. All these people we are seeing... They will tell you what they did, the consequences, the cause, and then their route to recovery and deliverance. So that, that will help you too. Let's continue to watch.
Now, at this time, I was a church goer. Like I said, I wasn't born again. Again, I did everything contrary to the word of God, but I would say I was a Christian by name. I was partying. I was getting drunk. I was just everything that had me walking as a child of disobedience and walking in the wrath of God, I was doing it. And the Lord had mercy on me. When I called out on the name of Jesus, because the word of God says that these spirits must flee, every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They flee at the name of Jesus. But this is what started me to go down the road of actually becoming born again. That wasn't my first time dealing with sexual dreams, but it is my first time actually challenging a sexual dream by calling out on the only one that can save us, Jesus. And when he, when I saw my spirit with chains around my hands and chains around my feet, that indicated to me, and it, it's more clear to me now that I'm in my word, that I was, I was literally changed, chained, probably by sexual sin. Like I said, I was just living, just again, like how that your modern day feminists. You know, sexual freedom, sexual worship, abortion, uh, just everything that's contrary to the word of God. I was a part of that. And the Lord had mercy on me. And when I called out upon his name, he showed me my spirit. And he showed my spirit running over to the Bible. In my apartment at this time, I had a Bible on the shelf that I never read. I didn't hardly read my Bible. But I will tell you that I was a Christian. I went to church every Sunday, but I didn't feel the conviction for me to come out of my sin. I would go partying at night. I would go to church, and I would go to, to the club that night. Probably had alcohol on my breath as a woman in church. Leave church and listen to all types of secular music. I had no Holy Ghost conviction. Yeah. Well, in her own case, what she said, um, yeah, every, most people go to church. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We go to church, and uh, most people have, like in the United States, where we are right now, know some, the, almost all Christian homes have more than one Bible or two or three. Some have ten Bibles, but the Bibles are never opened. Oh, yeah, on Sunday, everybody goes to church, and we shout, and we praise God, and so on and so forth. See what she said, until she was completely... God has completely given her life to Christ in truth and in spirit. Because you can't keep calling the name of Jesus Christ when you have no relationship with Jesus Christ. God wants you to come to that place of repentance. To come to that place where your flesh is crucified. To come to that place where your eyes is not looking for, for lost everywhere you go. To come to that place where, where you just don't think like the world eat like the world, drink like the world, dance to their music, listen to their music, and then on Sunday, you come to God. Even She said that even after service on Sunday, she ends up in the club. So the devil knows that we, we are just playing church. And that is why some people will call in the name of Jesus Christ in their dream, nothing will happen. And unless we give up that lifestyle and begin to shy away, the Bible says that God crushed the, 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 the head of the enemy under your feet. You have to claim it. There are more videos to come. You know, now we're on the, you know, the part where we say that, uh, you know, the consequences and, and then the, the, uh, the deliverance or what you need to do before you can be completely delivered. And I pray that after watching this program, you can play it over and over again. It doesn't cost you anything. You have nothing to lose but everything to gain. I want you to try and trust God. And as we watch. I will say, I, I'll first give my background, where I come from. Uh, I'm born from the Christian family. My grandfather was an evangelist, and my father was also a pastor. And the brother to my father had four wives, and my grand-grandfather also had four wives. And then the family, 
I found myself in a family whereby we were attacked with the spirit, a spirit of lust. And then this went on. Even after my tertiary uh, education, even though I qualified with my junior degree at the age of 20, but this spirit was tormenting me. I could not stop uh, being tempted by uh, young ladies. And then this went on till I became very committed in the ministry. And then as I was committed in the ministry, I got promoted to levels whereby I was handling small groups like cell groups. Then later, I was then given a, a branch to start or a satellite church to pastor. Then I started that church. But this spirit of lust never stopped haunting me. Because even then, when I was a pastor, I would be having extramarital affairs. And then uh, it, when I'm out do, doing my work, because at, at some time, before I got full time into the ministry, I was uh, involved as a town planner and the land surveyor and as a land development consultant. When I'm out in the country or out of the country, the first thing that I will also look for after getting the hotel will be my driver to get me the lady. While I'm, I'm also a, a pastoring. And then this haunted me that how am I supposed to come out of this? Because I knew it was wrong, but the temptation just overwhelmed me. I will regret after doing whatever dirty work I had done. I will regret why did I do this? How to come out of this? I did not have a solution. And then my wife will be left with the church that I was pastoring there then. And then the church will be doing very well in my absentia. And then when I make an announcement that I will be coming maybe for an Easter conference, there will be no one. The seats will be empty. And then instead of people being excited that the senior pastor is coming, but they will be discouraged and not come to church. And then the, the conference will be a failure. And that went on. That went on for years. Because I started being a pastor in the year 2007. I can confirm that happened as a result of the spirit of lust. But let me tell you something. Then I did not know that the cause of the lust was this spirit of the spiritual woman. And then, I, I, because I was not informed till year 2010. When my wife introduced me to Emmanuel TV, and then she said to me, Ngozi, we need help. Because what had happened then, this, this spirit of lust had taken everything that we had. I became a millionaire at the age of 28. And then everything just went down the drain. I could not see anything that I was working for. I will bring home an amount of about 15,000 US dollar cash net every month. But that money will just go to the drain. I won't even check or see where the money had gone to. And then we lost our house, a very big house, 38 room the house. It, won, it went down the drain. We lost cars. We ended up staying in the church, sleeping on the floor. And that spoiled my whole life because I ended up not now having even affection for my wife. When I'm back home, I remember at one stage I was out of the country for three months. I got back home and then I could not meet my wife. And I looked at her. She had such a big head. And then when I looked at her, she, her head is, is the size of a TV, 54 centimeter TV. <laughs> my brother, the, my wife will be short, will be very short. And then her thigh will be this size. And I will be like, I will sometimes look at her and say, what, what did I marry to? What, because she looked different from the day I met. And then I'll be like, I'll feel bad. And then I ended up telling her that you have changed. We have gained weight. You are like this, you are like this. And then we'll be having arguments. But we will try to resolve the arguments before going to bed. But at the same time, she will want to meet me. And then I'll be looking at her. Say, I can't. And at the same time, there'll be like the smell coming from her out of nowhere. And then I will be confused. I said, no, I can't meet. I said, okay, fine. Listen, I'm not in the mood of, um, of doing this. I think what we must do, let's wait for tomorrow. 
and then I'll come up with excuses. I'm not feeling well, etc. But at the same time, I've been away for three months. Well, well, well. This is one of the consequences, a man of God. This is a man who is a bishop. By the way, bishops are known to have more than one church. And then when the spiritual woman came to sleep with him in the dream, he started losing members, losing members. Eventually, he lost his cars, he lost his home. He was sleeping in the floor in the church and so on. This is what the devil does. When Jesus Christ said, pray for your enemies, when you see people behaving like this, it's actually the devil behind them, wearing them like a glove. They, are, they, became, they, they become puppets in the hands of these spiritual demons. And even his wife became so ugly, and every other ugly woman becomes beautiful in his eyes. You heard him say it in details. So it's, it's, it's something serious. If this man of God had to come with his wife, to go to another man of God who is, you know, empowered by God to be able to deliver people from this kind of bondages and shackles. So that's why they, 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 they are there. So I know for some of you who are going through the same problem, it's, you are not alone. But don't just keep your fingers crossed and say, wait till, till what happens. Seek for deliverance. Ask for deliverance. Search for deliverance. Tell somebody. Knock on somebody's door. Knock on the door of God. God said, when you knock, the door shall be open. Earnestly and sincerely and honestly, seek God for deliverance. He will never turn his back on you. I have more videos to watch, for you to watch. Her tubes are blocked. She went to see doctor and doctor told that her fallopian tubes are blocked. She don't have child. Well, we I said that she's my wife, I know her very well. You she's what? my wife, I can't leave her. When I got married to my husband, the spirit continued disturbing me. There's no affection for my husband. I like staying alone. I always like to be on my own. And the thing, my husband is not happy. At times, if my husband is talking to me, he will be irritating me. I will be annoyed. I always like to be alone on my own. And my husband is not happy. But I used to pray, say, God, all this encounter that I used to have, please deliver me. All these dead, dead people all the time, swimming, snakes, masquerade all the time, eating in the dream, that God should deliver me from it. Well, this is what the married woman said initially, that uh, she too lost any interest in her husband. You know, the husband loves her a lot, but she has no interest. What the, the, the spirit of lust has caused for both of them. And they, she was saying after deliverance, you know, what she went through, and then, um, so, Guys, this is not a matter of whether you are married or not. When the Bible says that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. He's talking both spiritually, physically, naturally, and supernaturally. It's a warning from God, both to spiritual world and non-spiritual world. Because God takes wedding, marriage so seriously. It's a soul tie between two people. You know, it's a spiritual, it's, it's something that is so great it's, it, that God has created. God created this institution. That's for those that are married. Then for those that are not married, once these spirits begin to sleep with you, it's very difficult for you to, to even settle down as a wife. Some girls will be seeing suitors coming and they will not be interested. Some men will be seeing some girls come and they will not be interested. Everybody just wants to be left alone because the devil has found a way or satisfied them. Don't get married, you can sleep with as many girls as possible. Don't get married, you can sleep as many with as many men as possible. And will dance to the tune of the enemy. That is not God's plan for you. So let's see what the little girl have to say, the younger girl have to say as her own remedy.
you know, I'm a sinner, you know, I'm prone to doing things I have no business doing. So, Lord, help me because I can't do it by myself. Okay, let's get started. So, if you're watching this and you seem to have reoccurring dreams of having sex in your dreams with someone that's not your partner or someone that's not your husband, um, it's something you don't want to take lightly. And I'll be giving you guys some PowerPoints to you can write them down you can copy and paste them i'll put them below so you can also read them after but we're going to attack it like full force because it's it's something that you don't want to take lightly it's an enemy it's some kind of force and you don't want to invite that in your life so for one the first before um we get to the prayer points the first thing is you want to guard your mind guard your heart guard whatever you see guard your day-to-day -day activities and you might ask how can i guard you know what am i guarding number one is filter your social media you might be following some pages that they post you know some you know attractive people and say well not per i don't want to say attractive people because everyone's attractive um you might follow some pages that they post you know naked shots of people you know what I'm saying I follow some of them on Facebook Instagram Twitter you want to shut them out you want to unfollow them you want to delete them you want to just block them because the more you keep seeing those things you're gonna be dreaming about them you're gonna be daydreaming about this and then it's going to transfer into your um, into your actual dreams so you need to filter out what you listen to who do you hang out with what do you where do you go what's your location what do you see on a day-to-day -day basis what like especially in this generation music is the biggest 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 factor for us because we just like to listen to music without knowing the connotation behind the music um, I'm not going to name rappers or artists or anything but they in some way try to throw some ints in there especially you be hearing songs about girls behind or girls does this boy just things that you know does not glorify the lord so you need to filter those out especially through music music is a big factor and like i said social media and where you go to and who you hang out with the thing you want to do is confess your sins and take authority take charge you need to act as fast as possible before this spreads into the rest of your life so when i say confess your sin come you know tell god that you know i'm a sinner you know i'm prone to doing things i have no business doing to well that's another perspective of of, of solution because most of the time we spend uh, maybe 75 percent of every day on social media like on facebook the devil has so much traps for guys you know these girls that come up half naked and then they focus and they want to be your friends and we don't even think twice they just go and then you go into the site you begin to see so many other things you know things that are so enticing and eventually gets into your mind from your mind it gets into your dream from your dream it begins to destroy your life after this video i'm going to put this video on facebook because the devil too is on facebook you know, like I said, I'm determined to chase the devil, flush out the devil, wherever it is. And I'm going to do it by the blood of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God, by angelic hosts. You know, the Bible said that uh, the, the Lord is, the, is, the, uh, is, is, is in charge of heaven's army. So it, and those army are at our disposals to deploy them on Facebook. And begin to find out these spiritual wicked wicked demonic influences and target them and begin to cast them out of your lives yeah social media is a place to it's something that is good but the devil is the prince of the air the devil is the ruler of this world but one thing i want to let you know that jesus christ said he came to destroy the works of the devil so I have, I've, you know, I've given my life to Christ to use me as an agent to make sure we destroy the agents of the devil. We destroy the devices of the enemy. We destroy the plan and project and objective of the enemy. No matter how they come, the Bible said that they come like angel of light. But we're going to take off the mask and flush them out of your lives. Let's continue to watch. The next person is Haiti. 
you know, she, she, she has a solution too because she was tormented for years. The letter God revealed something to her and she had to do it and she was set free. Let's watch her. So I was researching all this stuff. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I anointed my house. I took oil, put it on the, the, the um, door frame of every door in my home. I anointed my forehead and I just started praying, praying out loud, trying to get angry and I was getting angry with with Satan and rebuking him and um, you know just saying you know I I'm sure my neighbors thought I was <laughs> crazy but just yelling at him and, and and taking authority in Jesus name and saying this is the house of the Lord this is not your house anymore this does I don't belong to you anymore I belong to Christ and rebuking the devil and um, <laughs> and even you know I even got to the point where I think I didn't curse but I um, you know uh, said you know I don't you don't own me anymore. If anything, I own you. If anything, you are my slave. I've been given the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and all of the enemy. I have been given that authority in the name of Jesus Christ. So I did this prayer and then I also humbly just came before the Lord. I got on my knees after I got so angry and I just forgave. I forgave every person since I was a child that has harmed me, that took that innocence from me over and over and over again. I forgave them because I know the power of forgiveness is just as strong as the power of faith. In order for that light to crash and smear the darkness, we have to love and we have to forgive. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. So, I forgave everybody. I didn't go down the list. I couldn't go down the list. There's too many people. But I forgave everybody. And I asked God to forgive me. I humbled myself before him and I rebuked the enemy. I didn't feel like afterwards that these demon or demons, plural, were gone. I didn't know for sure. But I just kept telling myself I'm just going to act on faith. And, um, that night, the craziest thing happened, you guys. This thing, or whatever it was, it pinned me. It actually brought me up. It, it brought me up to, to where I was like in a sitting position and pinned me against my headboard. So I couldn't move. I could not move. And then as as I heard in my mind, his mercy endureth forever. The loudest screech, it was not human. It was like a, I think of like a pterodactyl or like a dinosaur, like a, like a, like high pitched screech. I don't know if it came out of my mouth. I don't know if it, I had just heard it but it was all in here and this thing was pissed all i could sense was that it was so angry it was so angry so i instantly woke up this was very quick this whole thing was very quick i woke up praise the lord praise the lord and so i just burst into tears and started crying 
because I did feel that I had been delivered of something. Something had was now gone. It was gone. The Holy Spirit completely intervened, and um, and it was it was so wonderful, and uh, so all this started be to become even more and more clear to me that the enemy is attacking me in my dreams because my guard is down. That sense of urgency that I had been feeling the, uh, the few weeks leading up to this of wake up and pray, Heidi, wake up and pray, wake up and pray. And let me tell you guys, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak because I would wake up and I would be so tired and I would just fall back asleep and fall back asleep. Well, in her own case, she has to visit her past when she was like five years old, being sexually molested and abused by loved ones, by aunties, by uncles, by cousins, and so on. When she was so innocent, she had to go back down the list and ask God that she forgives them. And for God to forgive her her own sins. And as I know some, some people will say, that's, that's not fair. She, she was innocent and so on and so forth. That's what the devil wants in, in our innocence. Remember in, in the, the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve, they were innocent. So the devil takes advantage of your innocence and, and attach himself to you from, from a, a nasty experience like that. So he needs God. It needs the light of God to attack darkness so that the forces of darkness cannot comprehend. So that's what she was saying. She has been praying and praying. Nothing was happening. Until she has to go back and forgive everyone that, she, that has sinned against her. No bitterness, no anger. Then after which that night, that demon, that, that uh, spirit of loss just 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 came out of her with anger. That's one thing the devil cannot stand is holiness. They can't stand forgiveness. They can't stand mercy from God. They can't stand righteousness. They can't stand uprightness. They can't stand justice. Anything that is good, the, the, the devil cannot stand it. So God wants us to, God wants to remind you anything that is pure, Anything that is good, anything that is marvelous, anything that is merciful, anything that is joyous, anything that is the light, meditate on those things. As you are meditating on those things, the devil will be driven crazy and they will eventually leave you alone. Let's continue. Let's hear from the guy's perspective, the, the, the guy who spoke before. There is something he did and he was delivered. People always ask me, how can I control my dreams? What if I sin in my dream? And I always reply, I treat the sins in my dreams just the same. I confess them to God, I turn my heart from them, and I cry out to Him to help me stop and overcome those sins in my dreams. That's how I treat them. And and I want to understand my own mind and how this double-mindedness works and how wicked the, the soul is and how I can work around it, how I can crucify it. I want to be smarter than my wicked heart. And we can be through Jesus. We, we start growing in Christ. We can outsmart our wicked, twisted heart. That's how we crucify that vile thing, through righteousness. And then I started thinking. I said, like I was awake today, like I'm awake. When I'm awake, when I'm alive and awake in conscience, I'm so ready for war. I'm not bragging. 
I'm saying I've learned over the 48 years of my life that when I wake up and I start praying, lead me not into temptation, don't lead me into temptation, lead me away from sexual immorality, lead me away from temptation on the computer, lead me away from beautiful women and looking and, and twitching, lead me away from these things. It's praying this all the time. And so I'm thinking, and all of a sudden this, it came to me as if I'm awake, it's like, you haven't sinned like this in a long time. And that's what kept me from doing it. Let me say this again. The longer I go with self-control through the Spirit, the longer I go away from the smoking, the drinking, the, the lust, the pornography, the fornicating with women, the profanity, the longer I distance myself from that old life, the easier it is to stay away from it. And that's what happened to me in my dream. I felt my body enjoying what was going on and I was tempted and even there was a time when I said no in the dream and then I, I went back to it anyway. And then I really snapped out of it when I started thinking, wait a minute, what you're about to do here, you stop doing it. I, I really reasoned with myself on the one hand, I, I wanted to do it in the flesh. On the other hand, which always used to dominate me, there was no second side. A side that had reason, understanding, power. And so I, we're growing in that, right? So in the dream, I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, yeah, I wanna do this, but I haven't done this in a while. I haven't done this, I don't do this anymore. That's what it was. I don't do this anymore. I got my, I got my, my mind is finally starting to understand that I don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, it's something self-discipline has a lot to, to, to has a, a part to play in this self-discipline. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anywhere you look, you will see something that your flesh wants. But your spirit is fighting. The war starts when you are conscious of your environment. When you are conscious of your relationship with strangers or non-strangers. When you are conscious of, of having a spirit of discernment to discern between what is good and what is bad and shy away with prayers from things that are bad. So eventually when you go to sleep, that same consciousness would follow you. It's just like you can't just decide to say, okay, I pray every night, but in the day, from morning till night, you watch pornography, or you just lost after women. Some people have even statistics to, to have a women's body and so on and so forth. They crave about it, they, they, they seek it, they think about it, they meditate on it, and you expect them not to follow you into your dreams. One thing I want to let you know is that even when you can't stop it, when you are conscious of your environment, bring Jesus Christ into the, into, your, into the scene. Let Jesus Christ come in. And as this prayer I learned from a man of God, he said, anytime you want to do something or want to pray, say, ask God to manifest his strength in your weakness. Anytime you begin to feel funny, your, 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 your flesh wants to have a kick just say lord manifest your strength in my weakness continue to say it god will manifest his strength in your weakness then you will begin to overcome don't just let it spirit, the devil have his way no god said with you he can chase a thousand with two of you he can chase ten thousand if god be for you who can be against you Nobody can be against you. No demon can be against you. No spiritual loss, spirit of loss can be against you. No matter how many they are. The harder they come, the harder they fall. But let Jesus Christ be the Lord of your life. The Lord over your spirit. The Lord over your thoughts. The Lord over your activities. The Lord over your environment. The Lord over what you see. It's good to see what God wants you to see. It's good to hear what Jesus wants you to hear. Don't just listen to any kind of music because people get a kick out of it. 
Don't just watch any kind of movie. Just watch what God wants you to watch. When you begin to obey God, then God will recognize you as his own. And he will manifest his power in your life. Let's see, there's one of these ladies too that was chained and uh, she has something to tell us uh, on what she did to be delivered. Because she said, oh, uh, she was a Christian woman. But let's see how she got off the hook from the devil, how the devil got so to I'm sharing uh, this with those that are dealing jaws. with these type of dreams. Just to let you know, first of all, if you're having sex in your dreams, that's not of God. Um, I don't care what form the spirits come in. They come in as these masquerading spirits. It's uh, familiar spirits, masquerading spirits. So they'll come uh, looking like your uh, spouse. So they'll come looking like your uh, um your co-worker or whomever they'll just come with this masquerading face but they're coming in to defile you in your dreams they're having sex with you in your dreams why if you're involved in any type of fornication adultery masturbation pornography if you've opened yourself up to just just uncleanliness that's one way in i mean these things are called spirit spouses very possessive some people call them the incubus and succubus spirit. They are. That's what they are. They're possessive. The music that you listen to. Hear me out. They can come in through there. Wherever you open up a portal for an unclean spirit to come in, they can come in. And they'll operate in your life. They have lawful rights to your life, especially if you are fornicating. Especially if you are masturbating. Especially if you're in pornography, if you're in adultery, if you're involved in sodomy. You've given these spirits legal rights to your life. What's the remedy? We've got to make sure that we are walking in holiness. That's the only way we're going to be able to overcome this. See, walk in holiness. That's this song that's holiness. Holiness is what he wants from you. Righteousness. Righteousness is what God wants from us. Holiness is what God wants from us. Uprightness is what God wants from us. Obedience to God is what God wants from us. God wants us to be clean. Cleanliness. Purity. That's what God wants from us. You know, anytime you watch these pro, 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 uh, pervert programs and listen to this wicked, uh, wicked uh, 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 music, there are open doors in your consciousness. And these spirits begin to creep in. They begin to creep in. They begin to creep in. You know, being holy at times, people think, oh, how am I going to do this? Just trust God. Begin to ask God to help you. Take a day of fasting, three days of fasting. There are some people who take two days of fasting every week just to ask God for cleanliness, for holiness. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy. And they said, Lord, how can I be holy in this world that is full of all this, you know, no, loss? With God, everything Anything can be, any impossible thing will be possible. Ask God. Peter walked on water when he asked Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come. Yeah, ask God, if it is you, help me to be holy. He will listen. He will help you to be holy. Let me tell you something. Why God has not destroyed the world today? There are very, very few people who are actually holy and righteous. They have been seeking God's, you know, seeking God's hand and, and uh, power and, and uh, help to help them to live a holy life. So she said, don't listen, just live holy. There are so many things that are enticing people out there, pulling you out from God's uh, 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 umbrella. The devil lo loves it when, when, when they get a child of God, especially when you are serving God in truth and in spirit. They intensify their temptation. But remember what God said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. So that is what I'm praying for you right now. Let God, don't let, let any temptation come over you. Let, let God will not let any demonic influence to over, over you. Let God be closer to you than demonic influence. Because he is God. Always remember there is the blood of Jesus Christ. It will help you to overcome temptation. 
to help you to overcome evil, help you to overcome the destruction of the enemy, help you to overcome these wicked spirits, this, this spirit of lust, this spirit of 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 uh, this spousal spirits and so on, this unclean spirit, this contrary spirit, that is the spirits that are contrary to the plans of God. The blood of Jesus Christ is there to overcome on your behalf. Let's see. Deliverance continues. And as we watch it, the deliverance intensifies now because pastors and preachers and deliverers that God has chosen and ordained and sanctified for this, for this job, they are all be becoming part of it. Out! In the mighty name of Jesus Christ! Out! Jesus, my wife! You are a stranger. Now get out! You are taking away my wife. You have no place in this body. Out! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. You are free. Stand up. You are free. Elle a été déclarée libre de ce mari spirituel, ce mari de nuit qui a détruit sa vie. Well, well, well. God is good. And all the time and all the time. All is good. His mercy endureth forever. And the Bible says, and in his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You know, God loves you, whether you believe it or not. I know he loves me. And I know he loves you according to John 3 16. For God so loved the world. You are in the world. I am in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for those who believe in him will have eternal life. Believe in what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ died on the cross a miserable death. Treated with shame. Denied by his very own. Betrayed by his very own. Handed over to his enemies, scourged, striped, spat on his face. They blasphemed on him. He took it. He was doing it for you and I. He shed his blood. He was crucified in your place. He was buried in your place. And on the third day, God rose him up in your place. He died for me. He died for you. And he rose for you and he rose for me. That's to say it's a free gift so that this devil can, can be defeated once and for all. That was a final blow that God gave to this demonic kingdom, to this devil and his demons. So that is why we can boldly come to the throne of grace of God and, 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 and obtain mercy. That is why we can come to God and God said, look, I've given you power and authority over this demon. To trample on scorpions and snakes, to trample on this, this, this wicked spirits, to trample on this uh, uh, spirit of lust, to trample on this unclean spirits, to trample on this wicked demons and Satan and his, and, and his clique and his network. So right now, I'm going to pray against all spirits of perversion. All spirits of perversion, I come against you with the power and authority that God has invested in me in everybody's home that is watching right now. The power of God is against you. The fire of God. God is a consuming fire. Holy Ghost fire in all of your homes. Holy Ghost fire in your marriage. Holy Ghost fire in, 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 in your um, families. Holy Ghost fire wherever these demons are hiding. And the blood of Jesus Christ will flush them out. And God arise and manifest your power in their homes. And begin to trash all these evil forces, evil spirit, their network, their kingdom. Let it be, let it be destroyed. Another one I pray against the spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. Sister, hear ye the word of the Lord. I'm pulling your ears right now. For God said, What God has joined together, let no man, let no woman, let no spirit put asunder. But the devil is known to disobey God and he wants to use his children to disobey God. 
But I pray, I just want to remind, I just want to remind the, 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 the devil and his, and his kingdom that we serve a God that is mighty and mighty in battle. He's invincible in battle. He is strong in battle. He is fierce in battle. He is the Lord of heaven's army. And I pray that right now, wherever people are having this problem, let God's heaven army begin to descend from heaven into your homes, descend into your marriages, descend into your family, begin to cut asunder with the sword of the spirit that is the word of God that cuts through spirit, that cuts through natural, that cuts through supernatural, the power of God. Let the power of God descend in your home and begin to devastate the enemy fiercely eradicate them from your life from your mind from your heart from your businesses from your marriages from your families from your thoughts from your activities from your tomorrows from your from your middle ages lord arise and manifest your power in their homes in the name of jesus christ and i pray against unclean spirit that's what the bible calls them they are unclean spirit god is holy they are unclean god is righteous they are wretched God is just, they are wicked. So that is one thing. They are very, very unclean. Don't, don't associate yourself with any, some people who call themselves spiritualists, they worship other spirits. But I'm warning you right now, the Holy Spirit is the spirit above all spirits. The Bible said that the, the word of God, they are spirits and they are life. So I pray right now that through the word of God, I'm impacting you with life of the life. I'm impacting you with the spirit of God. I'm impacting you with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm impacting you with the fire of God. I'm impacting you, impacting you with victory. You have to have victory in your home. Enough is enough. God does not, God said, do not, it's not going to lead you into temptation. May God deliver you from all evils in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. From all evil, from all unclean spirit. And I pray that the consequences caused by these spirits. You know, there are consequences. Those that are facing divorce right now because of spiritual husband, right now, if your marriage is coming unglued, I use the fire of the Holy Spirit to bring you together and glue you back together as you belong. God will join a man and a woman as husband and wife, and they become one flesh. No interference, no division, no obstruction. God has unified you and no devil in hell will pull you asunder. Because you are brought together by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are brought together by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You are brought together by, by the word of God. You are brought together by the fire of God. We are brought together by the plan of God. You are brought together by the purpose of God in your life. And there are some men who result into masturbation, women who result into masturbation because of these wicked spirits. Right now, that spirit is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Their devices are destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the finger of God, that is the finger of fire, begin to find these spirits and begin to blind them, begin to devastate them, begin to, 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 to smash them, begin to break down every bondages in your house, every cage that the enemy has used to cage you let them be broken right now in the name of jesus every shackle that they have used like that lady said that chains on her leg begin to fall when she called in the name of jesus christ let those chains and those shackles begin to fall and be set free in the name of jesus christ enough is enough every stronghold of the enemy that they are using to, to, to tie you, be pulled down in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the God of Elijah send down fire in your home and begin to burn them to ashes in the name of Jesus Christ. Infidelity is caused too when these spiritual spouses come. Every become, everybody becomes to cheat on themselves. The wife begins to cheat on the husband. The husband begins to cheat on the wives. That is not God's plan for you. Don't you forget, you that are watching me right now, you are made in the image and likeness of God. God loves you. That's why he made you in his own image. And I want to remind you, God said that he, Lord, smashed the head of the, the Satan and his demons under your feet. That's where they belong. They don't belong on your bed. They don't belong in your mind. They don't belong in your heart. They don't belong in your body. They belong under your feet. And by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the blood of the blood of the Lamb, they will remain under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are spiritual children that result from this. I see so many women who have been having sex with all these uh, spiritual uh, wives or, or husbands, and they become pregnant, and they give birth to pregnant children. 
There are some women who find a child sucking their breasts in, the, in their dreams. Those are not their real children. They are the spiritual, spiritual children. So when I send the fire of God to consume those spirits in the name of Jesus, whether they are children or adults, it doesn't matter. They are all evil. Evil will always produce evil. There's no way something evil can produce something right. Let them be consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let them be overcome and disintegrated by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will arise from heaven with sword and fire and begin to cut them completely out of your life. Those that are bound behind bars, let that bars be destroyed and be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray against spirit, uh, wicked spiritual visitations. They come and go as they please in your homes. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ in your dorm and get an olive oil. Hold that olive oil and speak the, the blood of Jesus Christ in that olive oil. Anoint your doors and your windows and your foreheads and the foreheads of your wife and your children and anything in your house. As you're anointing, you say, I'm anointing them with the Holy Spirit, the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on your bed. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on your pillows. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on your towel that you use to, to, to wipe when after bathing. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on the sponge that you use. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on your body lotion. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on what you use on your hair. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on the cup you used to drink. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ on your chariot and drive them crazy because they can't stand the blood of Jesus Christ. When you mention the blood of Jesus Christ, they tremble. They can't come and go as they please because anytime these spiritual unclean spirits come to your house, they, leave, they don't leave without dropping something wicked that will harm you later. But come hell or high water, God is still in control. Don't forget that God is still in heaven and this earth is his footstool. And under our feet, that's where the demons they belong. And another thing is that pray, this is for you, to pray so that the spirit of anger will be lifted off of you. God say you may be, you can be angry, but do not sin. Don't let the sun go down if you are angry against somebody. It doesn't matter what that person has done. Remember what Heidi said? That she had to go and ask God that she has forgiven those that hurt her, even when she was innocent. I know it sounds it sounds like you are a victim. Say, how can this be? They were innocent. But God has given you opportunity to live and give you an opportunity for, you, for him to reveal this. So that you simply just obey God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Always kneel down and as you right now, open your spirit as I pray. For, for let it go. Anyone that has hurt you, anyone that has disappointed you, those that have, there are some, some of these um, some women that some men promised to get married to and they, they did everything and gave themselves and eventually they were dumped and so on and they can't forgive. God wants me to let you to forgive those that hurt you. Forgive those that trespass against you. Forgive those that sinned against you. Forgive those that, 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 that have hurt you so bad that you think it's impossible. No, it is possible. With God, all things are possible. Forgive them. No bitterness, no qualms, no nothing just say Lord set me free I'm forgiving them so that God can also forgive you your own sins because he said forgive us our sins as we forgive those that trespass against us so that God will forgive you your own sins it's not that you are pure it's not that you are holy it's not that you have not committed any sin but God said yeah when you forgive them I will forgive you and once God forgives you it is done the devil will live crazy and as I'm praying for you tonight I know as you go to bed some of you will experience that evil force that will leave your body tonight and where would they go from your presence? They let them go straight to the bottomless pit where they belong. They don't belong in, your, in that temple. That temple is the temple of God. God takes it seriously. And once they come, they come with diseases, wicked diseases. Because they come to kill, to steal, to destroy. But God has come into your house right now to destroy the plans of the enemy, to destroy the devices of the enemy, to destroy the project of the enemy, to dismantle their kingdom, their network in your house in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are these open doors. These open doors is very, very crucial. Anytime you watch any movie and you simply go to bed, you notice that you begin to watch those movies play over in your head. You may say, well, it's just memory something. Yeah, that's how it starts. The devil, that's all he, all he needs to get into your mind. 
So if you watch something that is bad, like Nightmare, that some of these uh, movies you watch, these uh, 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 movies that scare scary movies, oh, it continues in your dream. But think of have good thoughts about Jesus, healing the sick, raising the dead, angelic visitations, helping you, ministering unto you, fighting your battles, watching good Christian movies. You see, eventually, the forces of darkness will surrender in your mind. And the light of God will reign. And I pray for the light of God to reign. And the Bible said, where don't let there be light of God. And where there's light, the Bible said that the forces of darkness cannot comprehend it. So right now, I'm praying for the power of light of God to permeate through your memory, permeate through your dreams, so that the forces of darkness cannot comprehend it. Let the power of the light of God shower you, flood over you, like just flood all over you, within you and around you, and in your thoughts, and in your dream, and in your heart. So that there's no way for the enemy to hide in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you to remain holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, God said, remain holy because he is holy. Be righteous in the right and in order with God because God is righteous. Be upright. Do not, do not faint. Do not dance to the tune of the world. Be righteous. Be upright. Be steadfast. Be unshakable. Be unstoppable. Put your trust in God. Put your confidence in God. Be holy. I command you to be holy in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to be righteous in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to be upright in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to be steadfast in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to stick with God in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to trust God no matter what in the name of Jesus Christ. Through the fire, trust him. Through the storm, trust him. Through unforeseen circumstances, trust God because he's the only one you need. And in the name of Jesus Christ, you will conquer. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will be victorious. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will have the mentality of a yoke breaker. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that God will give you a sword of the spirit. So when you find them in, in, in your dreams, oh Lord, just use them for, for experiment. Slash them to pieces. Because they don't care about you. They just want to destroy you and destroy everything that is connected to your loins. So the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And God wants me to remind you that even the violence will take it by force. Show no mercy when you come across any of these spirits. Oh, I command you, I dare you to show no mercy to these spirits. Because they have no mercy as far as you are concerned. And I plead the blood over your marriages, over your home, over your families over your businesses, over your careers, I plead the blood of Jesus, just the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set you free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set you free. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set you free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set you free. Oh yeah, that's my prayer for Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ to set you free from sin and from sorrow. Set you free from this demonic influence. Set you free from their, from, 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 from their prison. Set you free from their cage. Set you free from their clutches. Set you free from the hook that they put on your jaw. Set you free. The blood of Jesus Christ has that much power to deliver you from the bondage of this sin. The blood of Jesus Christ. We rescue you from the hands of these enemies. The blood of Jesus Christ will set you free. And whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. And I pray against pornography. Wow. It's a cancer that is on the last and the final stage in people's homes. At the click of a button. So I pray against the spirit of pornography. That is where these demons are leeching. They are leeching. They use and they leech upon you. Every spirit of pornography in any form or shape, be it picture, be it sound, be it video, be it act, let the spirit of God begin to consume those spirits in the name of Jesus and set you free. Set you free because hell is real. God will set you free. Let it rain the blood of Jesus Christ in your mind, in your heart. In whatever you do, let God set you free from that grip, that strong man that is holding men and women and the spirit of masturbation. Let God break that chain and set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. 
These are the final days. God is raising up an army in heaven to come for final battle. That is why the enemy is raging and raging and raging. For some of you that right now that are watching me on, on, on social media, be it on YouTube or on Facebook or on WhatsApp or wherever it is, seize this opportunity and turn your life around. You may not have a second. There was one woman who found herself in hell and she was asking God for a second, pleading and pleading. And God said, how many seconds do you have in a, in, a, in, an, in a minute? She said, 60. How many minutes do you have in, a, in an hour? She said, 60. How many hours do you have in a day? And continues and continues. Then God said, how many seconds do you have in the number of years he has given to you to repent? And now she found herself in hell. She's asking for one second. Wow. So that one second means a lot. But God said, I gave you more than one second. So I'm, I want to seize the opportunity right now to remind you. If you multiply all the days of your life, convert them to a second, you know how many seconds, how many opportunities God has given to you. If you cannot do it, God said, call in the name of the Lord. The Bible said, whosoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call in the name of the Lord and you will be saved. So I call in the name of the Lord on your behalf. Be saved in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Let God devastate your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like a bird that has been in a cage for so many years and all of a sudden somebody comes and opens that cage and the bird flies away and begin to see the sky and the atmosphere, begin to smell the atmosphere. So, wow, what a beautiful thing that they have been missing because the devil held us bondage in a cage. So God will break that bondage tonight. Break, break that shackle tonight. Break, break all those bars of iron and gates of bronze and set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of you who haven't given your life to Christ, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And it's simple. And some of you, if you listen to me right now and give your life to Christ, what if you pass tonight? You just go straight to heaven. But if the devil is talking to you now and I say, oh no, no, it, it can't be. And so the devil will always come and talk to you. Anytime you see the devil having double mind when there's something he mentioned about God, no, the devil knows exactly what he's doing. So I'm asking you right now to say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Ask him to come into your heart, Jesus. Transform me. Turn my life around. Purify me. Purge me. Cleanse me. Take control of my mind. Take control of my heart. Take control of my marriage. Take control of your families. Take control of your activities. Jesus, today I belong to you. I've given myself to you. My body, soul, and spirit. And I believe and I heard that you died for my sins even before I was born. I thank you for that. And I thank you for that gift. And I thank you that even on the third day you rose again for me. So that when I finally die and pass on, you, you have a mansion for me in heaven. And once you pray that prayer, God will honor that prayer. Because it is honored through the name of Jesus Christ. And you are set free. And if anything happens for you, within, hold on to that salvation. Because he's a God of our salvation. He's a God of deliverance. You know, and, 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 you know, and, and a God of our redemption. You are redeemed. You are saved. And you are rescued from the bondage of sin. So the devil has no grip over you. Even the power of death, the sting of death, Jesus Christ took the sting of death. Death has no grip over you. As a matter of fact, right now, if you have given your, give your life to Christ, the power of life and death lies on your tongue. Ask the devil to die. Anytime you tell the devil, now nah, this is what I want you to do, get out of my life in Jesus' name. He will flee because he has lost you. And I, I seal you with the blood of Jesus Christ and surround you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And let the angels of God begin to guide you from today. Guide their footsteps. As you sleep, they'll protect you. As you drive, they'll protect you. As you do your business, they'll protect you. As you mingle with people, they'll protect you. Now you have a real protection. Because God be for you. Who can be against you? In Jesus' name I pray. Please, next time, tune again into this uh, program. Where I still have a series on this uh, wickedness of Satan. The first one we did was the blood, the way it was asking for blood, blood, blood. Today is the way it uses sex to trap people. The next time, what there's an, another episode that is coming. The, the, the cauldron of, of the, 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 the devil's wickedness. That's the main theme. Alright? God will bless you.
as we go to sleep tonight. In Jesus' name I pray.